welcome to the Anchor Your Retirement podcast. I am your host, Barbara Gullen, and hanging out with me today in the studio on this humid, definitely summer is coming day, yeah. is Tony Shore. Hi, Tony. Hi, Barb. Good to see you today. Uh, Good to great. see you. You know, yeah. your hair holds up better in humidity than mine does. You know what? It it, it actually it does. I haven't been outside yet today. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm in my home studio. <laughs> So I've got to be completely honest with our listeners and viewers. Um, just before I began the day, I took a shower, shampooed my hair, got it perfect. And then I just sat down in the studio and have been recording. Uh, and so it's still fresh. Haven't been running around. Uh, just the last two hours I've been recording. So uh, oh, this is what happens. But if I step out that door of the studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is my home studio, but when I do go outside, um, this will be flopped You'll down. That's why actually I'm getting my hair cut later today. This, late this afternoon. Are yes. You? Yes. I am going to get a haircut cause it's too long. Cause in the summer it'll just, you know, I wanted mine long enough that I could actually pull it up. I haven't had it that long in a while and we're close. I mean, unlike you, I was out walking the dog at 630 this morning before it got too humid and before the pavement and the sidewalks get too hot for her little paws. Yeah. Not so little paws. She's well, I'm proud of you for getting up and walking and exercising. That's what I am supposed to be doing. But uh, nope. Bed, shower, studio. That's it. No, <laughs> <laughs> just walking from the bedroom to the bathroom to the studio. That was my exercise today. I'll get out late. Believe me, this afternoon is a lot of running around, and I'm going to take the dog on a walk, and I'm going to get outside and got to do some yard work. So I'll get my share in. Yeah, because I've got almost 8,000 steps logged already, and this oh, is 11 oh, o'clock in the yeah. morning. I will not... <laughs> I will not even uh, embarrass myself by telling you how few steps I probably have today. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, with everything I have going on the rest of the day, it'll probably be one of those 15,000 step days. Wow. That's a good, that's a huge day. Yeah. Keeps me on my toes, literally but, and figuratively. Yes. Yes. There you go. Well, Barb, I know that uh, today we have a great topic because this is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. You told me you want to talk about investing for income in retirement. And that's where that's where the disconnect happens with people mm -hmm. when it comes to retirement planning is how do you plan for income in retirement when all you have is it's not like the days where you had a pension and no. you and you have Social Security and you had those two things and maybe some savings and you're fine. You didn't have to worry about creating your own personal mm -hmm. pension. Now we have 401ks, IRAs, uh, 403Bs, 457 yes. plans, tax yep. annuities, or or even even you know just stocks. You know some people mm -hmm. invest in the stock market directly, but usually it's through a 401k or an IRA. But you know what? Uh, these are lump sums, and these amounts can go up and down in these accounts. So they how are. do you? How there do is you do a this? fundamental mind shift that we have to talk about and that the retiree needs to reconcile, the sooner they start working on it, the better it is. When you're still working and you're putting money into all of those different savings vehicles, those are your accumulation years. And it's like, if the market has a pullback, that's okay. I'm buying stock on sale at that point. Right. Once you're, you're in the, once you're, you're in constantly the buying. Year, yeah. Right. Right. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of our listeners have heard about the concept of dollar cost averaging mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. But when we move into that retirement phase, when we're in the distribution phase, okay, think of retirement as the peak of a mountain. And all these years, you've been working your way up the mountain by saving. Now, sadly, the image flashing through my head is from The Price is Right with the little mountain climber when you had to guess the price and the sure. idea was to not send the mountain climber over the mountain. I'm that right. many years old. Um, 
that's the mental that's hopping through yeah, my head. I, I remember the little morning. the little Swiss the mountain yeah, climber that kind of uh, wobbles on up the hill. Up and there, if you go yeah. even one penny over, he falls down the other the side. Yeah. yeah. So for those of you just listening and not watching on video, <laughs> Tony and I talk with our hands and we're gesturing through this the whole time. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> but, you know, we want you in your retirement years not to fall off the mountain figuratively right. or literally. Um, but we want to make sure that you don't run out of money before you stop taking up oxygen on this planet as well. You know, it, it's something everybody talks about being so excited to get to retirement and they don't think about what it means to retire and to actually have to start pulling out of those savings accounts and pulling out of the 401k and trying to make sure that that money goes as long as it needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. That that's the trick, isn't it? And so it that's is. where you come in. Um, but you know, how do we invest then for income in retirement? I mean, a lot of people say, well, don't I just use my 401k or 403b, mm -hmm. my employer sponsored account? Yeah, well, let's throw up the disclaimers that I am not offering anybody specific advice in right. this. You know, if you've got questions about this, then please reach out to our office. We'll be glad to have a conversation with you at no cost, no obligation. Take a look at where you are, where you think you want to be headed, and see if you're on track and aligning with that. For some people, um, they've got enough assets that they could just leave their money in the market and regardless of what happens, they would have enough money. Very, very few people are in that position, but there are people that, in, that are in that position. If you're in a place where you have concerns about whether or not you are going to have enough money to last your lifetime and to maintain your lifestyle, this conversation dovetails on last week's podcast about using annuities. Yes. Okay. Many annuities offer some sort of income protection through, there's several different ways you can take money out of a contract. Mm -hmm. For some, you're actually doing what they call annuitizing the contract and turning that lump sum of money into a payment for a period of years or for your lifetime. Right. If you pass away before that time period is up, your beneficiaries are going to receive some sort of benefit for the remainder of that time period. If you have chosen a payout over 20 years and you happen to live 25 years before you pass away, then your beneficiaries won't get anything, but you won't have run out of money. Yeah, which is the key, mm -hmm. right? To, uh, you know, you don't want your bank account to go to zero before your blood pressure does. Correct. <laughs> right. It's an interesting way of putting it. <laughs> you know, now you don't always have to annuitize an annuity to benefit from that payout. A lot of contracts have some sort of income rider associated with them. Some have a fee, some don't. But when you activate that income rider, you are putting yourself on a track to have some lifetime income. Sure. Makes sense. And okay. that's, that's, you want to, you know, because for those that don't have a pension, for those that are, are, aren't fortunate enough to have a pension, um, and they have the 401k or an IRA, <laughs> things like that, um, then they need to create their own personal pension, uh, to use. You have social security, but then you want income that you know will be there. So you don't have to worry about it. And people say, well, I've got all this money saved up for retirement, but do you know how long it's going to last? Do you know how much you can take out each month and have it still mm -hmm. last? You know, are you going to be taking money out when it's down? You know, can that amount fluctuate? But if you create a personal pension, like an annuity, which is what a pension and social security is basically an annuity, mm -hmm. you're putting in money and then the social security is an annuity in yeah. its basic definition. Yes. So, so you want to create uh, uh, payments that you know will be there to cover your full expenses. That doesn't mean you don't also want to have some in growth still, right? Though. Right. I mean, there. It, 
you never want to put all of your money into an annuity because you are giving up something that's very important. And in the industry, we call that liquidity. Lay people know it as being able to go get a hold of their money and do something with it if they need to. Right. Okay. Right. So we're always going to have a component that is in, you know, on the most conservative side, a money market account. And for those of you that are taking advantage of those high interest savings accounts, keep utilizing it for now. Um, the Fed made their comments a couple days ago. They have indicated that there's going to be probably one rate cut before the end of 2024. As the Fed starts to cut interest rates, the interest that you're getting on those high interest savings accounts is going to drop. So if you know that you're not going to need the money and can lock it into a longer term fixed, like a CD or a multi-year fixed annuity, you might want to consider doing that. Please talk to a fiduciary before you make any decisions like that. If it's in yeah. a high yield savings account, you've got more liquidity than if you put it into that annuity or even into a CD. Right, right. Yeah, you're locking it up for a certain period of time in a MIGA, mm -hmm. multi-year annuity or a CD. You're right. But your point there, I want to reiterate that, Barb, before you move on is work with a fiduciary, a financial professional who is a fiduciary, who's going to be looking out for your best interests. Uh, and I'm not going to name names, but I happen to know someone, Barbara Golan, who could help oh, you with that. You? Yes. Yeah. You know, then moving into the less conservative options, options that have more opportunity for growth, we're looking at investments somewhere in the stock or in the bond market. And then it gets a little bit trickier because if you're worried about taxes, then we start looking at things like municipal bonds because the income off of those is tax-free. Mm. Or we look at dividend paying stocks. Those are usually more established. Um, old terminology, I don't know if they still use it, was blue chip stocks. They were the names that everybody recognized that pay out a dividend. And, you know, if you find some high dividend paying stocks and they're, they are out there, you can actually build yourself a pretty decent portfolio with dividend income that you draw off of where you're not really dipping into the actual stock or selling those shares of stock. But again, that takes time. It takes effort. It takes work. It takes strategy. Then, you know, as we're moving a little bit more aggressively on the scale, you're looking at more growth focused stocks or something like that, where you're counting on the asset to grow, to have additional money to support your lifestyle. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's what we all want. And uh, I just think that getting this plan set up, the sooner you have a plan in place for how you're going to create income in retirement, the better. And you want to do it during your earning years so you can get set up to reach your goals. And, and the key is you, you've put in all this hard work. You know, most of us will work, you know, we could work 40, 50 years of our lives. Mm -hmm. And then you want to make sure that you're, ready and have the money and have a comfortable retirement, the payoff, the reward for all those hard years of work, right? You do, you do. And you want to start saving sooner rather than later. You know, there's speculation as to whether or not we are in a recession right now and whether it's a shallow recession or it's going to go deeper or whether or not we even are in one. But I was reading an article yesterday about employment and older people over 50. Mm. And interestingly, only about 25% of people, I think that's what the statistic was, I think. Uh, but it was a very low percentage, less than half of the people who are over the age of 50 who get downsized, actually end up finding employment at the same pay level or higher. Yeah, yeah, it's tough right now. So yeah, and the older you get, the harder it gets and the harder it is to make that same level of pay. Mm -hmm. You know, this article was talking about how artificial their employers are using artificial intelligence to scrub 
resumes before they even get to a set of eyes and that referencing certain skill sets or not referencing certain skill sets can get your resume thrown out just simply because they assume that if you don't list a LinkedIn or your Instagram or something like that, that you're an older person that doesn't understand the technology and that isn't with the times. So you know, you may also find that you're in a position where you have to start taking income sooner than you anticipated, which means that your nest egg hasn't grown as much as you thought it was going to, and it's going to have to last that much longer. Yeah. And that's when it's really, really crucial for somebody to get the help of an advisor, to get the help of a fiduciary. And I've had a couple of people say that they don't necessarily want to pay the fees or the cost of working with an advisor. Hmm. Here's the thing. We're talking about trying to make the, your money last a lifetime. And hmm. if you don't know how to solve that problem, while money isn't the most important thing, it sure buys a lot of important things. Yeah. And it will more than, and in most cases it's going to more than pay for itself because study after study shows you do exponentially better with when if you're working with a financial professional than if you're not. And that that means a if you're working with a fiduciary like mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. um, all the studies show you're going to be able to make more money. And I think even that number is deceptive because uh, not only will you, your returns should be better over across the board, you're going to avoid very expensive mistakes. You yes. know, some people, some people when they shouldn't lock in a lower social security amount and they lose, they could be losing $800 a month that they could have made because they didn't consult with a financial professional or they, or had, they, do, or the, they, they the, do the opposite and they erode their nest egg waiting for that bigger social security payment. Yes. And then they don't have that safety net or that cushion. You right. Know, when, in my webinars, I and and seminars, I'm like, you know, you think that you're saving you know, that you're doing yourself a favor by using your nest egg to wait for this higher social security payout. I want to know how many of you think you can reach out to social security when you need $10,000 for a new roof for the deductible on your house because you just went through a tornado and asked them to send you an extra 10000 on your next check. Yeah, not going to happen. No. So there needs to be a balance with all of this. And yes. You know, people underestimate the strategy that goes into putting together an effective financial plan. And it's become and more complicated. It's not it your has. grandfather's financial plan where you had your pension, you had your Social Security, mm -hmm. and you probably had a retirement account somewhere that you've right. been throwing stuff in. And that right. was the three-legged stool that's gone um, for most people, not for yeah. all, it, but for most. But for quite and, a few. And it's not that simple for anyone anymore because uh, the tax laws have gotten complicated. Uh, there are so many rules rules and regulations, there are limits and contribution limits and Medicare and social security have become more complex. It's not just a matter of filing when you turn 65 or 66, it's completely no. different. Everybody's situation is different and we live in a different world and other tools have been improved. Some, some options have gotten worse. Some options have gotten better. Uh, so you need to know what all the options are and nobody, you know, this is why uh, we don't perform surgery on ourselves. I'm not a surgeon. I'm not an expert. Uh, and I want even an if expert. you were, you couldn't do your own appendectomy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That is true. So you need to work with a financial professional and find one who's a fiduciary. That means they are obligated to do what's in your best interest, not theirs. And they are held to that standard. Uh, they get audited. Mm -hmm. And so they have to make the right decisions for you based on your personal information. And I know that's what you would do anyway, Barb, but you are a fiduciary and that's what you do for people. And, you know, it's a privilege to be able to help people with this because, yeah. you know, like you said, my, when my grandfather retired, he got an option to take a golden parachute and retire early. So he got a fantastic pension that he was able to elect a 100% survivor benefit on. Wow. Yeah. That's and unheard of 
that doesn't happen anymore. No, and I mean, well, he's been gone eighteen years. Yeah. So you know, when he retired, I was just out of college, maybe. Um, you were still in junior high. Let's just tell the listeners that. I mean, let's, we can <laughs> fudge on that one a little bit. Maybe it was high school. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. no, but most people don't have that story to tell anymore. Sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good point. Um, so it's important that you understand what you're doing and how you're doing it. And I know, you know, there are people out here listening who are civil servants, and we definitely appreciate your service, whether you're a first responder or, you know, if you're a firefighter or a police officer or a teacher, you mm -hmm. guys all have unique circumstances. I'm proud to say that our firm employs two firefighters, one retired wow. and one who Excellent. is bivocational. So they understand some of those in intricacies even mm -hmm. more than your average fiduciary would because they've lived it. Wow. And, you know, I have seen Mike, our retired firefighter, help so many guys understand how to maximize the use of their 457 and what they can do with the health care costs around all of that um, and everything that goes into that, that these guys didn't understand, even though it had probably been sort of explained in some way, shape or form at an employee meeting somewhere. That's why having another set of eyes to look at things really gives you the best perspective on what's available and what you can do. Yeah, I, I think that's huge. Well, Barb, great show today. But before we go, let's let our listeners know how they can get a hold of you to get that plan in place or get a second opinion on where they're at with this. Sure. They can reach out to us on our website, anchoryourretirement.com. Or you can always call us at area code 913-553-6222 and choose the option for appointments and scheduling. And one of our team members, if they don't answer the call right away, will get back to you shortly. And we'll get you on the calendar to meet with either myself or Mike or Walter or one of the other agents in our office and help you figure out where you are on your journey to planning a successful retirement. All right. Well, thanks, Barb. Great show today. Listeners and viewers, thanks for tuning in. That does it for today's episode of Anchor Your Retirement with our host, Barbara Gullen. We'll see you soon.